The platform aggregates telemetry data to provide a rich view of activities and only generates a malop when the suspected threat reaches a certain threshold. Because of this, Cybreason produces lower than expected false positives. Of course, false positives do exist. One method of dealing with false positives is to add indicators of compromise, such as file hashes or IP addresses, to an allow list, ensuring the file or address does not cause a false positive in the future. However, maintaining a list of static IOCs is only part of the solution. The Cybreason solution includes behavioral-based allow listing, which dramatically expands on the file-based allow lists. Cybreason analysts have the unique ability to exclude false positives based on a very granular definition of behavior. Let's look at an example. Say you encounter this malicious activity by PowerShell or .NET process malop in your environment. This malop was triggered because the Cybreason platform detected a specific activity from a PowerShell process. If we look at the process itself, we see from the command line that one of the reasons why the platform deemed this behavior malicious is because the PowerShell process is attempting to download and execute a payload from an external network. This activity is suspicious because it's a technique attackers use to gain execution in an environment. But in this case, let's say this particular domain is being used for legitimate purposes as part of system admin procedures. We want to stop receiving alerts on this behavior. However, simply adding PowerShell processes to an allow list would expose the environment to significant risk. Similarly, allowing all downloads from this address could also pose a risk. What we'd like to do is describe this exact scenario. If PowerShell is used to download and execute something from this address, and it's doing so from a specific user admin account. To specify this exact behavior, we can use the behavioral allow listing feature. From the behavioral allow list screen, analysts can create these rules. We'll give the rule a name and choose the type of behavior we'd like to suppress in these specific conditions. In this case, it's for a malicious activity by a PowerShell or .NET process malop. Then we'll build the rule for the particular behavior. When a PowerShell process is trying to download and execute something from this address, and this is being done by a specific admin user account. Another powerful feature of the behavioral allow list rule is the ability to apply the rules in a multi-tenant environment using sensor group IDs. To specify subtenants in a behavioral allow listing rule, use the owner machine element with the sensor group filter and the sensor group ID. Once a behavioral allow listing rule is in place, the behavior will not trigger a malloc. However, you can still see that the behavior occurred by querying the specific behaviors in the investigation screen and looking at the evidence and suspicions section of the element details pane. For example, in this element details pane, we see details about a rule. Of course, no alert was generated as we've allowed this behavior.